Myanmar, a country tucked between Thailand, China, and India, has been governed by strict military rules and closed to the world for over 50 years. This long isolation and the devastating sanctions imposed by Western countries led to rapid decay of its infrastructure, including medical care. Rampant poverty and lack of resources created an unprecedented number of patients who are in need of medical help. With the recent changes towards democracy, the country has opened its doors to volunteers. ISMS decided to send one of its teams, Team New York, made up of 20 doctors and nurses, to provide medical and surgical care to the poor and help by upgrading the operating rooms and intensive care equipment in the Mandalay Teaching Hospital. Their mission lasted 12 days, where they worked around the clock treating patients and educating the local doctors and nurses. This is my very first mission trip. My experience here has been phenomenal. It's very humbling. It has taught me to work very efficiently with limited resources. The people here in Mandalay are very, very kind-hearted people and they've been great to work with. It gives me great personal satisfaction to know that we make whatever little difference it does make to improve the lives of people that don't have it as fortunate as we have. For the past several years, they were telling me not many foreign doctors have come here because of their political situation. So there's tremendous need for what we bring. We brought over 81 crates and in there were bogey machines. We brought a whole laparoscopic tower which we leave here for them. Cardiac monitors, the sectoscope, hysteroscope, three anesthesia machines, three full anesthesia machines. A lot of big things and then we bring all our instruments for laparoscopic and open cases. You know we work like a jigsaw puzzle, it all fits together. So how many doctors and nurses does it take to put one shelf together. This is the Home Depot section of YSMS. <laughs> Many of these countries that we go to, they're excellent surgeons, they've got the technique in, but they don't have access to modern technology, you know, modern machines, and advanced techniques in laparoscopy and others. So one of the main objectives is to actually teach and impart that technique to the surgeons out here. They're eager to learn. We have standing room only in the operating room. I keep teasing, we're selling bleacher seats. Every move you make is, is a teaching opportunity because they, they're watching everything you do. They've been most excited about the hysteroscopy, which is an instrument used to look inside the uterus, which they have not been able to before, as well as a leap machine used for cervical dysplasia. From the senior gynecologist, each person has taken a turn, and they've been quite adept by the end of the week. Hysteroscopy, laparoscopy, leap, now so I've had the pleasure of working with the local doctors here and teaching them how to do some cleft lips and skin grafting techniques. Because they have cleft lip and cleft palate, they have difficulty feeding and they have difficulty with speech. So our ability to come here and help in their future development of language and communication is just very, very, very rewarding. We've also done cases uh, with patients who have had syndactyly, and that's webbing of the fingers where they're not separated. So it uh, really hinders the babies from developing hand function. It's on both hands. These three fingers are fused together like a web. So what we do is we actually separate the fingers with rearranging skin in the area and doing skin grafting and it helps separate it so that they can develop and function normally. The best part of this has been teaching them how to use new equipment and leaving the equipment behind so that they continue to use it. Yeah, this uh, patient had a small tumor that began about uh, 15, 16 years ago and it has slowly grown into this uh, very large size. I've never seen one this large <coughs> before. This woman had a tumor on her left parotid for approximately 12 years. It has been growing almost the size of a soccer ball on her left jaw. It's very difficult to just comprehend 
that somebody can live 11 years with a tumor that's growing, that's interfering with her daily movement and would have ultimately caused her death because she said in the last four years it grew significantly. <laughs> I think this is going to be um, quite difficult with potential of a lot of bleeding. We're uh, going to be a team effort with myself and uh, Dr. Medhart and the local uh, surgeons. Yeah, this is going to be quite challenging, but uh, it will I think be. we yeah. can do yeah. it. I don't know. <laughs> Sterile. It was a, a collaborative work between general surgeons and plastic surgeons, and we had to plan how we're going to make the incision that allows enough skin for them to be able to close the wound. Some of the things that we are concerned with when we remove the tumors that we have to injure some of the structures around there, including the nerves uh, in the area that affect function and facial expression. But it seems like our patient's doing great. How's that? Yeah, it's it was intensive, an intensive case, but it was a wonderful end process because the patient basically was transformed. We were able to close her with a straight line incision along her jaw and we know that we've made a difference here. Try to smile now. I'm smiling. There we go. We've got a nice earlobe now, and uh, everything will settle down. The swelling will go down, and in a few weeks, it's going to look really good. So, can you smile? <laughs> That's good. Has she seen herself in the mirror? <laughs> Tomorrow the doctor will take the drain out and that's it. <laughs> okay. 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 I think we made a very big impact on some of the people that were disfigured because it changed their whole quality of life and that's the one thing that you like to leave knowing that you did do something for someone that's going to make their quality better. But it's sad because you know you get attached to the people here and uh, I hope we had an impact on them too. I always say it's medicine for medicine. There's no bureaucracy and red tape and insurance companies. You come, you help the people, you leave behind hopefully something that they continue to utilize and you get the gratitude and it's just, it's a win-win. The way they approach me about questions about techniques and asking if they can be in touch with me in the future for different advice and tells me that we accomplish a goal which is basically spark the confidence to move on with the learning. I'm going to take more from them than leave behind actually. And when you leave, there's so many people that are still requiring the surgery that it just makes you keep coming back. It doesn't matter if I'm from New York or the USA, whatever, we're all human and that element of it is really special. That's it. <laughs> Due to poverty and conflicts in the northern part of the country, there is a large number of orphans in Myanmar. So, in addition to providing medical and surgical care to the patients, 
ISMS Team New York added community service to their goals. Two team members, Mr. Thomas Sullivan and Mrs. Mia DeLorso, worked tirelessly during the visit in four different orphanages. Their work included upgrading the facilities by installing new floors, beds, and cooking equipment in the orphanages, as well as providing clothes, toys, and books to the orphans. Cash donations to the monks in charge of the orphanages were made to help provide future upgrades as needed. All in all, the mission accomplished the four goals it set out, providing free care to poor patients, educating the local healthcare providers on modern techniques in surgery, upgrading equipment for the operating room and the ICU, and providing much needed care to the orphans.